is uh, Paradox with Digibytes. And um, so I didn't do any this morning, so I'm kind of just doing it here in the afternoon. Uh, just kind of having some thoughts, ideas I wanted to put down, put them out there. And today I want to kind of talk about the idea of adaptable blockchain and gaming integration. So, and I know blockchain is a lot more than just the, the concept of gaming. Um, it was really kind of put forth for kind of as a ledger to kind of store and hold information. And then, you know, not only there for a financial sense, but for a record sense. And then the, the whole NFT boom came you know, later after that. And then they've, you know, they've been kind of building layers ever since, uh, especially with the concept of uh, entertainment, gamification, everything like that. So, you know, you've already done your research, you know all about blockchain, you know all about crypto and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, maybe this would be just a refresher concept. But, you know, other than the big ones, like, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other ones like that, um, that run, you know, not you know, grew it with layer one and then kind of our layer two or, or bigger. My idea is this. I mean, there's certain chains that have come out that created their own kind of ecosystem in their own chain, uh, but still running on the concept of a ledger technology. And then some of these will have like proof of stake, proof of work, you know, they'll, they'll have a, a you know, verification system. But I, I kind of was thinking today, I found it interesting because, you know, we go back to the old inception of, uh, of the personal computer and um, the, the, even the, the inception uh, before that with, with the ideas of Internet and how everything kind of went from uh, a governmental, maybe in commercial sense, to a personal use sense um, outside of business. And when I look at ledger technology, and like ledger technology, the idea has been around for a, a long time, even before it became a blockchain type of, uh, of, of, of a concept. I mean, look at Oracle, for instance, and how things can kind of be stored on, on a ledger. And I thought to myself, well, going back to old computing, we would have this concept that we would have this, you know, this PC, it wasn't connected to anything, and we would, you know, uh, have a software system, you know, that would kind of, you know, usually be, you know, um, text-based, right, with inputs and outputs based upon the software, and then we could upgrade that. And then eventually we connected them through the internet, and then we connected them through concepts of peer-to-peer, -peer, download, upload, everything like that. And as communications became more seamless and quicker and faster and better, now we are today with the idea and concept of, you know, the, the idea of blockchain, um, especially if, you know, we're having records of data and how those records of data are verified, stored, collected, and um, changed um, through um, kind of a node or verification process. So we kind of almost went to the, 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 the reverse of what it was, where instead of having everything in our computers in a walled system, really a closed system that we would upgrade and then connect. We kind of now done where, like if you look at a, a, a Bitcoin node and you, you basically pretty much the whole chain's built on there and then everyone's kind of verifying. And then, you know, the only way you can really change the information once it's on there um, without, you know, the, the, the payments for the changes on there is to, I mean, usually what's very big is to do a hard fork. And if you know what I'm talking about, then, Pretty much to change everything is to really, you know, get a big consensus to change everything and then to move from there, especially if you're trying to, to right a wrong, like saying like if a system gets hacked or a whole, a, you know, whole thing gets really messed up. And again, that's going from out inward instead of like the, I'm talking about the personal computer, inward, outward. So I've come up with a lot of different concepts in my head. I've been really trying to, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have done this too. Um, but on my downtime, I kind of just will play with these concepts in my head. I'll do a mind mapping process. I'll do a flow chart with, um, different conceptual ideas. And, you know, the idea concepts, one thing, the application is another, but I thought to myself, well, if we can have this where it's a different type of verification, sending and receiving process, 
then maybe we can do things differently. And I've, I've thought about two different solutions. So I'm not going to say this out in the open. Um, but some of them have real interesting concepts. Um, I'd find it interesting to find out if anyone else has come to anything close to that. Maybe there's a lot of better ideas out there, and I'm just kind of spinning my wheels. But the whole idea about this, guys, is for mass adoption, and it has to be something that can be very, very quick to move through different systems. It has to be something that's recognizable, usable, um, and can stand the test of time, especially when technology is changing. So, I mean, like, you probably could upgrade a whole chain. And we've seen that happen with the uh, amount of um, information that can be stored on the block. Um, and that's the, the kind, of, kind of we saw the, the, the forks of uh, with Bitcoin. But in the long run, what can be done if, if it's not Bitcoin, guys? You know, and, and I know it's maybe probably speaking, you know, taboo and everyone in crypto is going to hate my guts, but the, the concept is this. No matter what coin it is, or ledger, or anything like that, it has to be something where it can be massively used integrated-wise. And the verification process has to be... Uh, I don't want to say the word out just because in my idea of I kind of already see it. Um, and it's not an old concept, but I, I don't hear anyone talking about it. But just for it to be smooth in the processing of the reading and writing. I guess that's the best way I could say it. Um, and then some areas will be reading only and some of the areas will be writing. And I think that would work a lot quicker, especially in the way I have it in my head. And, you know, if it's not going to be fast, then how can we expect gamification? Gamification is a process that has to be on the fly so massively quick, especially if we're talking about, like, I mean, if, if I, you play a game like Destiny, for instance, and you're constantly getting tons of gear, and you're, you're, you're acquiring certain amounts of experience and points and money and this and that, how is that going to be stored on a, on a ledger on the fly? You might be able to do small bits and bytes, but, uh, you know, even if you go and you have a layer three or four, whatever, you're having a big amount of outside information. And eventually then you store that in, in tighter circles onto uh, an original layer one ledger. The whole processing is that, you know, what's going to be the buffer time then? And I, I don't know if anyone's asking these questions, but for me, it's like, well, you know, if I'm a daily player and I'm having like a hundred different adjustments and variations even like it's, again you're talking about destiny when you do strikes and games and missions you're having so many things coming and going and maybe you're trading with people on a centralized server in a wall garden that's fine but once you go out into a decentralized area we're not just talking about one pfp here we're talk, talking about literally probably a thousand pieces of code that are shifting you know and that's my concern because when you're talking about one person now you're talking about millions of people how's this really going to work you know how is the integration going to occur and then the the other concern i have is the safety concern security and safety because now you're going to have to have it where okay not only does it have to be verified stored and done now you have to have the safety with it. And we've seen with um, the way that the wallets are stored right now, um, especially if it's decentralized. The concern for me is if I connect that wall to something or if I get a dusting attack, if you guys know what I'm talking about, and you interact with this token that was thrown on your wallet, or even if your airdrops something, that's still a token that's on there. It's just pointing to an address. You interact with that, and now you've now made yourself susceptible where you can have pretty much everything in your wallet backing. My whole idea is with the guys is not to scare people, but to educate. The more I kind of look at the layers, and I've been thinking about this for a very long time. I started off with blockchain, NFTs, and crypto before I went into the centralized digital collectibles era uh, line. And even then, I was doing digital collectibles before they really went onto a major blockchain. You know, there's one 
platform, and you probably can know it just by me saying it, Mutable X. And another one that we can mint centralized uh, to um, Ethereum, and we can unmint it. So I pretty much named the two big ones right there that, that I am on, uh, other than OpenSea and the Polygon um, collections that I've collected over the, over the years. But my whole thing is this. In a centralized server, you have, a, a, I feel, a major sense of protection. And there's a lot of other companies out there, especially in crypto, that have a centralized type of setup where you have a centralized wallet and then you can add things and take them off. But the, the, set, the issue is this. Once you start going into centralized, uh, decentralized and you use a MetaMask wallet, trust wallet, whatever wallet, you run the risks right there as you interact. Just like a computer back in the day. Once you put the computers on the internet and now you can receive pictures, information, emails, viruses, trojans, different forms of attack, you had at least some kind of layer of protection that you could add to the PC. My whole thing is this, what layer of protection can you add to a wallet that at least is a buffer? I have ideas in my head, guys, but these are questions I think as communities, we should come together and then the brightest minds make the, the, the effort and make it happen. And do it. Maybe there's companies already out there doing that. But if it hasn't been maybe put thought forward, I've been actually thinking about approaching companies and bringing these ideas to the forefront. Um, I'm not I'm not the smartest guy, guys. I might sound like it, and I, I can put my ego on the wall. But I definitely want to get in front of some smart people. Because if the ideas haven't been put through, or maybe someone hasn't been loud enough, like, like I'm being loud right now, right? Putting my ideas out there putting them into a, 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 a voice space. I think the potential is massive to first start off centralized, maybe creating a chain through that and then working outside that. Again, I'm, I'm thinking back to when I grew up having a PC, making that and then connecting it outward. I think server-based and server-side is a great way to start and beta testing that before you go out further i could be wrong maybe like gaming consoles are doing this already i look at uh, i've been i was thinking about uh playstation today and i was like playstation just did a patent where you could see the pretty much the flow chart of their um execution idea of the nft on how that's gonna work and i said well there's nothing else on there what are they doing and i said they're one of the biggest gaming environments out there they can do it any way they want they could create a blockchain they could pretty much um, keep it it's centralized in their PlayStation network, of course, because they want to throw all the PlayStation work for games. So everyone else connects to it. They have control of the security. Yeah, maybe you can eventually move that out into a marketplace, but that's by item by item. That wouldn't affect the overall use of everyday trading and, and buying and selling. You have it centralized, serialized, but eventually you can choose maybe through a fee. I've seen this done on, on at least one of the platforms on and going on from there. So my whole thing is I find it fascinating because this technology is on the forefront of maybe growing to something much bigger because to have digital and digital ownership means quite a few things. Yes, you can have it decentralized and yes, you can have the idea of digital ownership. But without the safety and security, and especially the speed of transactions with methods option, you're not going to have that. So you need to have the, the 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 software integration and throughput to be able to handle the speed. And most importantly, I think the first part is always safety and security. Without safety and security, you're never going to have the full backing trust that will be needed for all the money and resources and also platforms and, and gaming and IPs to really put their ideas into this. I think that's why I've seen big IP really putting their resources into a centralized environment before they go decentralized. So anyway, that's my thoughts, guys. Digibytes, throwing it out there. Hit me up if you have any thoughts, ideas. Let me know if you think it's cool. If it's something you thought of before too, or you think I'm crazy, I'm all open. Next time, guys, peace. Have a wonderful, blessed night. Later.